Moving into chapter 18, let's look at problem 20 where we're asked to write the mechanism for the conversion of the starting material with these reagents to the product. We're going to look at parts A and C. Keeping with our general strategy, let's identify the major functional groups in both the starting material and the products. We can see that both the starting material and the product have a CO double bond and a CC double bond. Overall, if you were to determine the molecular formula of this compound, let's go ahead and do that. We have seven carbons. Let's count the number of hydrogens. We have two, four, six, eight, ten. Ten hydrogens and one oxygen. If we do that for the product as well, we'll see that it's the same, C7, H10O. So overall, we're not changing the molecular formula. So what you'll notice is different is that we're, we're essentially going from a di-substituted alkene to a tri-substituted alkene in the product. This is called an isomerization. We're moving the external alkene into conjugation with the CO pi bond. So how does that happen? Let's go ahead and draw in a hydrogen at this alpha carbon. You'll notice in the product there's only one hydrogen at that alpha carbon. If we draw in these hydrogens, there's two here in the starting material. There's three in the product, as this is a methyl group. So what's happening is that the sodium hydroxide, which is a base, is actually deprotonating this alpha hydrogen. So keep in mind we're under equilibrium conditions. That is going to generate an enolate. So here's one form of that enolate. Your byproduct of that is water, which is fine. We run the reaction in water, so we're producing water. A resonance form for an enolate can look like the following. Keep in mind for a resonance form, all we're doing is moving around electrons. So we can delocalize those electrons onto the oxygen. So how do we actually march this alkene into conjugation? So we're going to push arrows the following way. If, if you look at this substructure here, this is also an allylic anion. So we can draw another resonance form for this where we delocalize the negative charge onto that carbon. So now the negative charge is on the carbon. Water is going to be our proton source to protonate that negative charge. So in this way we're, we're regenerating our base, sodium hydroxide, and protonating the methyl group. So overall, this is an isomerization from a di-substituted to a tri-substituted olefin. In part C, we're looking at pretty much the exact same type of problem. We're starting with a di-substituted olefin. I'll draw in these hydrogens so that it's, it's clear what's happening. So now in the product, there's actually two hydrogens on each of these carbons. Over on this side, we're starting with 
two hydrogens, we're ending with one hydrogen. This carbon, which initially has one hydrogen, has no hydrogens in the product. So what's happening in this case? Well, this allylic hydrogen, which I'm going to underline here, is actually acidic. And it's acidic for the following reason. It's allylic to this alkene. And once we deprotonate it, we're actually going to generate an enolate, which is the focus of this chapter. So let's go ahead and deprotonate that with our base. And I'm going to deposit the negative charge right on that carbon. <clears throat> so our byproduct is water again. We're in water, so it's fine to generate that. So we've deposited that negative charge on the carbon. Our sodium cation. Now let's push some, some arrows here through resonance. Now remember, resonance is only the movement of the electrons. We're going to form a CC double bond here and deposit the electrons at the alpha carbon. So there's our sodium counter ion. Now if we look in the product, we see that that alpha carbon has a hydrogen. So what we can do now is go ahead and protonate that with water being the proton source. So this is strictly an acid-base reaction. We're protonating the alpha carbon we're generating sodium hydroxide as the catalyst. Put in those hydrogens for reference. So you can see that we're almost there. We have the two hydrogens on the alpha carbon we still have to protonate this beta carbon. So keep in mind, any hydrogen that's next to an alkene, so for example, these hydrogens here, these hydrogens are acidic. These hydrogens, which I'm going to draw in, are actually a little bit more acidic because they're next to the CO double bond. So what we're going to do is have the sodium hydroxide act as the base again. and deprotonate an alpha proton on the other side. So we lose water and we generate this enolate. So this negative charge can be delocalized either onto the oxygen or on this carbon. Let's show it on that carbon because ultimately that's what we're trying to get to in the product. So this is strictly a resonance form now. So here's our resonance arrow. We'll go ahead and draw this allylic anion. So you see now we've installed that tri-substituted alkene. We have the negative charge on that carbon. We fill in our counter ion. And in the re remaining step, we're going to go ahead and protonate that carbon using water as the proton source. So we lose or regenerate 
sodium hydroxide as the catalyst, and we protonate now the beta carbon. So this is another example of isomerization of acidic protons 